Hello and welcome. In this two-part video, we'll dive into the Mead LX5 telescope's electronics. In this video, part one, we'll create schematic drawings, and in part two, we'll use those drawings to figure out how it all works. The circuitry is spread over three parts, the front panel, the base PCB, and the hand controller. The plan is to find information on all of the components and then follow all the connections between them, including wires, connectors, and PCB traces, to reverse engineer the schematic drawings. We'll start with the easiest part. Let's take a look at the front panel. It's connected through a connector to the base PCB. That's a PC board that resides in the base. And it has front panel connectors for things like the hand controller and the declination drive and the reticle, uh, reticle illuminator. We're going to disconnect it and just take a look at the back of this front faceplate. You can see there's a lot of wiring there. Um, there's even some resistors. Okay, we're ready to start our wiring diagram for the front panel. This is the Mead Quartz LX Pulse Drive. This one happens to be called an LX5. Um, uses a stepper motor and a couple of circuit boards we'll be looking at as well. But for now, this is just the front panel. We're going to flip it this way to do our work on it. So we will be making the, uh, all the pin numbers will be mirrored in the, over the Y, over the X axis. And we can see everything pretty easily here. So let's just get started. First thing I usually like to do is draw all of the terminals of the devices that are affixed to whatever we're dealing with here from the circuit board, or in this case, a, a front panel. So, Going from right to left, the first thing we run into is a connector for the electric focus. And these are two terminal connectors that are meant to connect to something like this, a monaural audio jack that has uh, a conductor here, and then a conductor that comes up through the inside of it and sticks out the end here. So this is one conductor, this is the other connector. This is made to plug in and make contact with two terminals. This one for the tip, and this one for the barrel. So the way we'll draw this guy is with a barrel and barrel connection, and then a tip in the middle. Then we can move on to our switched potentiometer here, which we'll draw as a switch. Got this connector, this connector, this connector. Now we have our big DIN8 connector with a pin at the top, uh, two at about 45, two at about 90, two more at 45, and then this ninth connector at the bottom, which is for the metal, to connect to the metal shield around the connector. I like to use the pin numbering from the data sheet. It's not what I would have guessed. This one doesn't assign a number to the shield pin, so we'll just call that one pin 9. These are two uh, double pole, double throw switches. They each have two, two throws and two poles. So that's six pins for each. We've got this off, off panel connector here, which we'll draw in up here. It looks like five pins and we'll arbitrarily number these as if we're looking in with the notches down contacts down and then number from the right one two three four five then we've got an led and a barrel connector this connector is very similar to the others except it has an actual pin inside here but it also has two terminals the shield on the outside and the pin for the inside. And it looks like the pin is this guy. I'll put him over here. Because the shield of this power connector is at ground. So the LED cathode would be here. Anode on the right. Anode goes through a resistor to 
That's this terminal right here. This is the on off switch. This is power coming through the, through the ammeter to it. So this is the jumping off point for power. And this is connected to power. This terminal or these two terminals are connected to power when the switch is turned on. When it's turned off, nothing is connected there. And these two terminals, as you can see, they're not connected to anything. So we'll just make, draw an X through them. Over here, we do have something though. This is another resistor. And it looks like it's going right between these guys. And then we have this red wire coming off as well, which is going over here. When the switch is turned on, this is power. So this is power going out to the hand controller through a diode. And the reason it's going through this diode is probably to protect against uh, somebody plugging in a reversed, reversed power supply that's not center positive, center negative instead, probably to protect the hand controller electronics, hard to say. That, and now there's one more connector here that we haven't drawn yet, that's this one. It goes into this bundle of cable tied wires here, but I can see that it's going to our pin five of our off panel connector. We've still got this guy to take care of. Both wires go all the way over to the other side of the board. Let's see, we'll take first the shield connector. That's this one. And we can see that it goes to this connection right here. And the other terminal of that connector goes right to the very next pin. Looks like it's this wire. This wire looks like it's pin four. Let's double check. Yep. Now this switch is finished, except we never connected our ground. And here in this case, we don't have to draw the wire if we don't want to. We can just put the ground symbol here. Now we'll just continue along in the same manner until we've finished up all the connections. Okay, well, it looks like we're done. We can now transfer this over to a schematic. First, we'll put all of our incoming connectors on the front of the panel on the left-hand side, and we'll put our edge connector that goes off the panel on the right-hand side. So let's grab that connector first, see if we can find a five-pin connector. And then the power connector and the three audio connectors. Three. Our DIN8 connector. And our two switches. Okay, let's number our connectors. I like to make J1 the power. So we'll make him one. And then we'll just continue on with the three audio connectors, and the other edge connector. The two switches, let's make the power switch, switch one, and then continue on numbering and labeling the other switches as well. For this time, we're going to follow along with the entire process of schematic entry for completeness, but just for this front panel circuit. Once is enough to get the idea. We're just dropping in symbols and connecting them by copying the connections from our wiring sketch. In this case, I chose to put the front panel connections on the left and the base PCB connection on the right, with the hand controller and switches in the middle. You could have adopted the convention of signals coming in on the left and signals going out on the right, and in that case, the declination drive, reticle connection, etc. would go on the right. That would work out fine as well.
So here's our finished front panel schematic. We've named all components and connectors and numbered all of the pins. The connections that leave the DIN8 connector and go to the hand controller don't actually land in another connector that's numbered, but they do have different colored wires for each signal. So we've put in a cross-reference so that we can easily tell which wire that arrives at the hand controller came from which pin on the DIN8 connector. After the front panel, we'll try the base PCB. This is a small rectangular printed circuit board with five ICs and some passives, which we've already mapped out. We'll start with the traces on the back. They're the easiest to follow because they don't go under any ICs. For the top, it will be considerably harder and we'll have to resort to using the continuity tester a lot more. We're just going to go along using the same exact technique that we used on the front panel. Eventually we'll have a finished wiring diagram for this PCB. It's a good idea to check over the connections at least once because it's easy to make mistakes. Now that we've mapped all the connections, we need to assign each component a number and determine its value, which is usually marked on the package. For resistors, it's in the form of a color code. After that, we're ready for schematic entry. That process is the same as what we did with the front panel. And here is our completed physical schematic of the base PCB. Some of the ICs contain multiple independent logic functions. One contains two flip-flops, one has four analog switches, and one contains four exclusive OR gates, though only one is used in the circuit. Since our goal is to understand how the circuit works, we're going to use the individual functional symbols. For the hand controller, there are actually two PCBs, one for the logic and switches, and one for the keypad. The keypad switches are on the top PCB, and that's the one we'll tackle next. Now for the switches, these don't have any markings on them. We can't look them up, find a data sheet, a schematic for them, but we can easily figure these out because they're very simple. These are momentary contact switches. They spring back up when you push them down. And usually those will have a normally open and a normally closed terminal plus a pole, or sometimes they'll just have a normally open and a pole. But in this case, they have three. We can see that there are three pads per footprint. So what we've got is the kind of switch that, that looks like, um, schematically, looks like this. There's a pole, a normally closed, meaning there's continuity there, even when the button's not pushed, and a normally open. And when using our continuity tester, we can verify which, which of those pins are which. Um, these two will be normally connected, so that's the near one and the far one. We don't know which one's the pole and which one's the terminal yet, but we'll know that soon. We're going to push the button by pushing down on the keypad. Okay, we verify that this pin is the common pin, so that's the pole. This is the normally open pin because it didn't connect until we pushed down on the, on the switch. And this is the normally closed pad because it, it had continuity with the pole even without pushing on the switch. This board is easy to trace since all of the paths are on the same side and are not covered up by anything. About the only concern is keeping aware that it's flipped over, so the connector at the top of our drawing will be the bottom one if we're looking at the top of the keys. So now every terminal of every switch has a connection, except the ones we've marked with an X, and every terminal of each connector is connected, except for one pin, which we know is a no connect. We're ready to go put it into a schematic. Okay, we've got a blank B-size sheet open, which we'll use eventually to put the entire hand controller schematic on. 
But right now we're just going to put the keypad part and we'll put that over on the left hand side to leave room for the rest of the hand controller, which is the greater part. So start out by placing our two comp our two connectors, um, which we're going to call J1 and J2. Um, numbering them one to six down will work fine. We'll put a note there to relate that back to how we number them when we're looking at the board. And our seven switches we'll put in a pattern kind of kind of like they're on the physical hand controller. It's real easy to get mixed up on these connectors going back and forth between the wire, uh, the wiring diagram and the schematic. So we'll start just by putting the no connect, which is on the top connector on our wiring diagram on pin one of the bottom connector here. And also there's a no connect on the normally closed part of the map switch. So as mentioned before, it's important to put the no connect mark on here just for your own sanity so that when you look at it later and see that it's not connected to something, you don't stop and wonder whether you finished that schematic and it's all done or whether you left some stuff undone and you have more work to do. We're entering these connections right off our wiring diagram, but flipping it so that the east key is on the top. As long as you keep that in mind, it's easy. And that should be it for wiring. We'll do a quick check, make sure all the connector pins are wired and all of the switch pins are wired. And then we're going to draw just a graphic box around this part because this is going to be separate as the keypad daughter board. And we'll label that. It here's good. And then the last thing we want to do is put a note about how we numbered these connectors on the board. And we're done. Now we've just got the bottom hand controller PCB left to do. This board is going to be tricky because it's very dense at the cord connection end. There's no connector for the cord, so we just have unnumbered holes on the board that the wires are soldered to. We group them into two virtual connectors and since the eight wires are of all different colors, we make a note of it to help with cross-checking later. There are four potentiometers here that are not possible to see under, but with liberal help from the continuity tester, we can get this done. So here's our finished wiring diagram. It had to be checked a few times, and some mistakes were found and corrected. We entered the schematic next to the keypad schematic we already created on the same sheet taking care to correctly match up the connectors so we could follow the signals easily. What we've got at this point is a complete set of schematics that align with the three parts of the drive, the front panel, the base PCB, and the hand controller. And we'll post downloadable PDFs of all of them on the ClearLine website. Since these schematics align with the physical parts of the drive, we'll call these physical schematics. This type of schematic is not the easiest to work with when trying to understand how everything works though, and that's our goal. In the next video, we'll transform these into functional schematics, which will help us as we discover the operation of the drive's electronics. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.